How the NBA Draft is Rigged for the Rich The National Basketball Association has never had a good method of determining who gets the first pick in its draft. Over the years, league officials have tried several different ways to determine a fair system for turning amateur prospects into NBA players and stars. Basketball is unlike other major sports where many players make up a team, and no single player can impact the success of a franchise on his own as much as in basketball. As we have seen on several occasions, winning the draft lottery and selecting that once-in-a-lifetime player can quickly turn a team from lottery team to playoff contender for many years. Want to know about it in detail? Well, stay tuned till the end. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will talk about how the NBA draft is rigged for the rich. Meanwhile, subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon. That being done, let's start. The method itself could be the source of contention. Other sports don't use complicated equations, ping pong balls, or big dramatic announcements. The reverse order of the season's end is used by the NFL and Major League Baseball to determine the draft order. Simply put, the sooner you choose, the more you lose. A lottery is used in hockey, but the prize is different. The winning team only moves up four spots in the draft order, rather than winning the first overall pick by default. The lottery favors the winning teams, and the team with the worst record typically receives the first pick. The slideshow that follows will go over some of the draft's history and most common arguments made by conspiracy theorists against the NBA lottery system. The NBA used to select the team with the worst record with the first pick in the draft until 1966. However, there was a twist to it. A territorial pick, which allowed a team to select a player from their own neighborhood, was available to each team. A team lost their first round pick as a result of using that pick. Kyrie Irving, Derek Williams, and Jimmy Fredette could all be playing for the Bobcats, Phoenix, or Utah Jazz if that rule were in place today. The league switched to a coin flip system from the territorial pick in 1966. The teams in each division with the worst record would basically flip a coin to decide who would get the first pick. The Houston Rockets were using the coin flip system until 1985, when many people thought they were deliberately losing games to get the coin flip and possibly the first pick. The lottery system was established in 1985. Each non-playoff team was given an envelope, which was then pulled out in order of the draft from a large spinning hopper. A lot of controversy erupted when the lottery was first used. Until it was completely replaced by ping pong balls that appeared to be more dependable, the system was tweaked. The New York Knicks won the first overall pick in the 1985 lottery, the first year the system was used, and used it to draft Georgetown center Patrick Ewing. Fans across the nation were outraged shortly after the draft and accused NBA commissioner David Stern, a native New Yorker and Knicks supporter, of fixing the draft. The draft's video replay revealed that one envelope was slammed against the inner wall as the majority of the envelopes were loaded into the hopper. It was obvious that the envelope that belonged to the Knicks had a bent corner as Stern pulled out the envelope. That would be used to select the first pick. The league's desire for the draft's biggest star to play in the biggest market and on its biggest stage actually makes sense. The best player in the draft would have been sent to a smaller market with much less exposure and the potential to make money for the league if teams like the Pacers, Sonics, Hawks or Kings had won the lottery. Ironically, the entire strategy didn't work out as planned because the Knicks didn't win a championship with Ewing and the 13th player drafted was better than Ewing. Carl Malone, a member of the Utah Jazz, was that player. The Boston Celtics had just finished one of their worst seasons ever when they entered the lottery for the draft in 1997. They finished the year with just 15 wins, one game behind the Grizzlies for the league's worst record. According to a rumor, a group that included Commissioner David Stern and Spike Lee could not bear for the Celtics to win the draft lottery and draft Tim Duncan from Wake Forest. Many people believe that the lottery was fixed once more so that neither the Celtics nor the Grizzlies received the first pick. Instead, despite having the third worst record, the pick then went to San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs have won multiple championships with Duncan, who is regarded as the game's best power forward. The Vancouver Grizzlies failed in Canada and relocated shortly after, and the Celtics took longer to recover. It occurred twice in the space of five years. It appeared to be a dream matchup each time, the hometown hero who plays in close proximity to home and transforms a franchise. The Cleveland Cavaliers won the first time in 2003 when they were vying for the worst record and first round pick. They selected LeBron James from an Ohio high school with that pick. Take a closer look, the Toronto Raptors were also in the running to win that lottery pick. According to conspiracy theorists, it was impossible for the upcoming NBA star to play in Canada. They did everything in their power to keep James in the United States of America, the Eastern Conference and his home state. 
We are aware that things did not go as planned when he left his family and moved as soon as he could to the Heat. In 2008, when the Chicago Bulls miraculously won the lottery with less than a 2% chance of receiving the top pick, the hometown boy was selected for the second time. Derrick Rose, a native of Chicago, was the Bulls' first overall pick. A good way to sign a top player in one of the NBA's biggest markets. The Bulls were not performing well prior to Rose's arrival, and the league was happy to try to regain the Bulls' popularity during the Michael Jordan era. Luck or a plot to keep the hometown heroes close to home and rebuild a franchise in one of the largest markets? Lightning never strikes the same spot twice, or so they say. Shaquille O'Neal, one of the most dominant players in league history, was drafted by the Magic after they won the lottery for the draft in 1992. In his first season, he improved by 20 wins thanks to his presence. The Magic won the lottery the following season, despite having a 41-41 record and just missing the playoffs. As if that weren't enough, they only had the chance to win the lottery and it was the one that came out on top. Chris Webber was selected with the second of the two lottery picks, but the Golden State Warriors traded him away in a draft night deal. Soon after, Penny Hardaway arrived in Orlando, the Magic reached the NBA Finals. When O'Neal signed with the Los Angeles Lakers as a free agent, the pair had only played together for a short time. John Wall, a Kentucky player, was selected by the Washington Wizards in the first round of the draft the year before. Despite only having a 10-30% chance of winning the lottery, the Wizards were victorious. Following the off-court controversy involving Wizards star Gilbert Arenas, Washington was forced to pay his enormous salary. The franchise was dealing with the loss of its longtime owner, Abe Pollin, making matters even worse. With the top overall pick, what better way to energize a team in need? The fact that the Wizards play in our nation's capital didn't hurt either. In terms of potential controversy, this season is not any different. Two teams that lost star players in the NBA draft lottery recently finished in the top three. The first overall pick went to the Cleveland Cavaliers, who had the second worst record, and the Utah Jazz, who traded for all-star Darren Williams, moved up three spots from sixth to third. Additionally, the Cavaliers have the fourth overall pick, it makes one wonder if this was planned to make LeBron James' departure a little easier to accept. Is this just a coincidence, or will this be the NBA's strategy to maintain league parity in light of the trend of superstar players forming super teams? Is it just luck, or does this make it easier for the smaller teams to compete? So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments down below. And that's all for today guys. If you found this video interesting, make sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Until then, peace.